easy drop-in replacement for your 3D printer. Okay, not quite a drop-in replacement, but they're both easy to install. Hey guys, welcome to a new series I'm starting called Layman Reviews. Because if you're anything like me, you can't see the difference between these two photos. My goal is by the end of this video, you know if you want to get the Micro Swiss NG or the original Micro Swiss. I was actually really surprised with the quality of the, what's this called, the fan thing thingamajigger that holds all the fans. One of the claims of the Micro Swiss NG is that it's lightweight. Now, I could put on a scale and give you some sort of like five grams, 10 grams, whatever it ends up being. But in reality, what does that actually mean? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the extruder all the way to the far side and we're gonna see how much the gantry sags. The original extruder moved the X gantry a whole millimeter while the NG barely moved. And I don't know why I didn't realize this from the start. I just assumed the build plate on the printer with the original was warped, but I guess now I realize why. Another claim is that the NG has a low overhang design. And it does. It's about a quarter inch less overhang than the original. But it does also add an inch of width. So you'd actually print less pieces on the same bill plate if you're printing one piece at a time. That extra inch is because the NG comes with dual fan ducts. Now that could be beneficial if you're printing with material like PLA. But in saying that, you could upgrade the original to have do dual fan ducts. There's plenty of files on the Thingiverse and places like that. So I don't really count that as a benefit because that's more it depends on your use case. Now remember, if you're printing things one at a time, you need to update your print head settings in Cura or whatever other slicer you may be using. These are the numbers I decided to go with. They may or may not be accurate for you. One thing I want to mention, and it could just be my specific printer, is that uh, that extra width caused me to lose about seven millimeters of room on the X gantry. And what ended up happening is that the nozzle now, when it's at home, hangs over the build plate. So instead of it being at negative two, where it's not over the build plate, um, now it's over the build plate by five millimeters. And that means my width of my bed got reduced by five millimeters. So I actually went into Marlin and I updated my X-Min position parameter in the firmware uh, in order to count for that. Another claim is that the Micro Swiss NG has the shortest filament path. Now when I'm printing, I eh, don't really notice the difference. Where I do notice the difference though, is that in the old design, the filament would sometimes pop out by the gears and also it put a lot of stress on the whole printer when I was trying to get the filament in there because you had to pry back on the gear. Whereas with the new design, you gently squeeze it together and then you put the filament in there. Now, sometimes you have to jam it and I haven't quite figured out why that is, but it still puts less stress on the whole thing compared to the old design. Another claim is that the NG is adaptable to a wide range of 3D printers. And it's true. Unlike the original, which was made off one CNC piece of aluminum, the NG is two CNC pieces of aluminum that are screwed together. What that means is in the future, if you decide to change printers, or if you end up doing some upgrades which change the X gantry, you'll be able to probably either buy adapter plates from Micro Swiss, or you'll probably find some online from people who design them and 3D print them. To test if the NG has more extrusion force than the original, with more extrusion force than you'll ever need, I set up a modified version of a tug of war. Now, instead of the filament running straight out of the NG across and into the original, I decided to run it through a pulley that goes with a one kilogram spool of filament. The reason I decided to do this is because if they're pulling straight on each other and one of them slips a bit and digs into the filament too much, it's basically game over for that one. Whereas with pulling a filament in the middle on a pulley, it'll slowly increase tension the higher the filament gets just because the cable will become more horizontal. So really what should happen as they're printing is that the one that can withstand more tension coming from the load um, will be able to win, basically. This is all theoretical. I haven't tried it yet. Just thought I'd give her a go. I took a simple STL, the cylinder, hollowed it out, and I'm printing on base mode for this test. That way it's as even as possible. There's not going to be a zigzags or retraction.
The moment the spool of filament was about to lift off the table, the original started under extruding. Meanwhile, the NG was able to lift the spool of filament all the way up as high as it could, up until the moment when the filament that the, was in the NG gear itself, it ripped a chunk out of it, and then that's when it stopped printing. So the NG, the, the actual print, there's no under extruding the whole way up. All the layers are well adhered. Um, all the layer lines look awesome. So is the NG worth an extra $20? I think so. Check out this video to see how you can 3D print objects taller than the X gantry one at a time.